Hello and welcome to our quick lecture on the phenyl red broth. The phenyl red broth is a carbohydrate test and it is usually one of the first tests that's run after isolating an unknown organism. Uh, first thing we want to know is about uh, carbohydrate or sugar metabolism. In our particular test, now phenyl red broth normally comes as just a broth base and you can add to it any sugar that you are uh, wanting to test for metabolism of or fermentation of. In particular, it's looking for fermentation. And we, in our lab, we will be testing for glucose and lactose. Glucose is a monosaccharide and lactose is a disaccharide. And an organism that is capable of glucose fermentation is not always capable of fermenting lactose. But if lactose can be fermented, then glucose will also be fermented um, uh, because it is the, one of the monosaccharides that's used to make lactose. So here on the right, we have the actual chemical structure of glucose at the top, and we have lactose at the bottom. Now lactose uh, fermenters are going to produce a specific enzyme called beta-galactosidase. And beta-galactosidase is going to break the bond right here between the two sugar molecules, glucose and galactose. And when that bond is broken, then um, glucose will be released from, uh, from galactose and will be available now for fermentation. So this is why an organism that can ferment lactose is capable of glucose fermentation. Now, beta-galactosidase, again, is that enzyme that's produced by those lactose uh, fermenters. And in order for glucose to enter into primary metabolism, if lactose is present, uh, uh, lactose has to first be broken down. Now, this 1,6 and 1,4 beta-galactosidase um, will break lactose in half, causes that one glucose and one galactose molecule. Bacteria that can ferment lactose can produce that beta-galactosidase enzyme. Um, bacteria that do not ferment lactose are incapable of production of that enzyme. So here's the actual test, and we're going to talk a little bit about what goes on in this tube. Now in here, we are looking for the properties of fermentation. And in fermentation, we get two waste products. We get CO2 and we get acids. Okay, we're talking about bacteria here. Now CO2 is in gaseous form. So in order to observe if CO2 production has occurred, just like we saw in our nitrate test, the phenyl red test also has a Durham tube or is a really small little uh, tube inside of the larger test tube. And that Durham tube is upside down so that if gas production occurs in the form of CO2, gas will get trapped inside that Durham tube we will be able to see the gas bubble at the top of the Durham tube. Now acid production is detected by the presence of um, acids or alkaline conditions and we can visualize this with the aid of phenyl red. Phenyl red is the pH indicator that's placed in the media. Now phenyl red as a pH indicator in acidic conditions will turn yellow. Uh, this is actually the same pH indicator that is used in the MSA, the mannitol salt agar, that we looked at earlier in the term. In alkaline conditions, this occurs when bacteria are incapable um, of using the sugars of fermenting. So this is no fermentation. This process occurs because bacteria incapable of fermenting sugars will actually break down proteins in a, pro in a process known as protein catabolism. In protein catabolism, NH3 or ammonia gets produced and this is a strong base. So in this case, the alkaline conditions will overtake the tube and they will turn a dark pink. All right, so we'll just put pink here. And when we record the results of a uh, phenyl red broth, we always record the broth result, acid or alkaline, over the Durham tube result which is positive or negative for gas production. And when we record these, acids are recorded as A and alkaline is recorded as K. So my first tube here is K negative. And since there's no fermentation, we're not going to have any gas production. So alkaline conditions are always going to be negative. In my next tube here, I have acid, it's turned yellow, 
but I have no gas in the Durham tube, so it's A negative. And in the last one on the right, we have fermentation, right? So it's acid, it's turned yellow. We can also see there is a fermentation up here in the Durham tube, so this is positive. So this is A over positive. This can also be written as A over G. This is the universal way to record the results um, for a uh, phenyl red test. So when you record these in your unknown or in your lab manual, you should be using this particular phenyl red format.